Was Hakeem good. Williams, man. Was Thanks good. for joining us. Uh, how you doing? Good to see you, man. Excited to have you here. Yes, sir. Excited to be here. So just, I was out of practice yesterday, and I remember I, I turned to Amanda, and I said, uh, is there a different guy with that's named H. Williams? Because from a distance, I didn't recognize you. You look twice the size that you did last year. Um, man, just let's talk about that for a second. So you go through your second Built oh. by Storms program. Uh, how much size have you put on this offseason? What's, what's that feeling uh, like? So um, I didn't put on, like, I didn't really put on size, so I came in like big, but like I really just slimmed up and turned that into muscle. That's really what happened. So okay. I just looked more linear. So we saw you at the uh, at the squat party video, where yeah. again Destin was in the background of literally every picture. It was it was quite impressive. Yeah. And what were you squatting? In? Not the four. Was it four twenty five? Four four plate. Four thirty five. Four and thirty five pounds. That's uh, that's a Richie Leonard plus uh. Well, like Kevin kind of, but there's no one on the team that weighs 100 pounds. Sorry, buddy. Uh, that's that's awesome, man. So when you kind of when you build that muscle and you go from again sort of that high school body where you're naturally just a great athlete to a built by storms, you know, strong college athlete. What what does that produce in your game? Like, what differences does that, or what does that give you the ability to do differently and better? So, um, I mean, obviously, I love to block. Uh, I'm a good blocker. So um, I'll just say it uh, it helps me block better, and it also helps me when like I'm running a route or you know what I'm saying, trying to get away from a yeah. DB or get off the line on a DB. I'm bigger and stronger, so to where I can use my body and my hands more quickly and faster. So last year you got to go against a guy who you know, not being biased, but a lot of folks on the internet who do draft analysis are calling one of the best press corners in the draft right now, Renardo Green. Right. What was that moment like, though? You just got to college the first time he put hands on you at the line of scrimmage. Was that something you'd ever dealt with before? Nah, never. And, uh, I mean, it only made me better. You know what I'm saying? Man, just being a part of a great team, I mean, everybody has no choice but to get better because everyone's good and everyone's making each other better around them. Absolutely, man. So we got a, a couple questions. Um, last year in the beginning. Like the Duke game. Okay. Yeah, can you just describe the feeling uh, coming in as a freshman, you know, working all offseason and then getting to have some big moments in big games like that third down catch in the Duke game? Right. Um, you know, obviously you had that screen that you took to the house, which is just incredible. But in those big games, right, like Duke, when we need need momentum, got to get the first down. What, what was that feeling like to do that in Duke Campbell? <clears throat> I mean, it's a great feeling, but like, it's an amazing feeling, but you don't feel it like right then and there though. That's because like when you're on the field and you lock in, like everything else is zoned out. Like you only focusing on what's going on on the field. So like I caught the ball and it's just like, all right, what's next? What's the next play? I'm trying to get next play. I'm not too like focused on that first down for real. And you said, uh, you said you love to block. I, I referenced earlier the, the viral clip of you just blocking a dude into his own bench. Um, you know, I think among fans, message board folks, we love all of you. Uh, you know, there's this concept of, hey, maybe a five-star recruit is going to be a bit of a prima donna, right? Not not want to roll up his sleeves and, and do do the hardest stuff when he first gets here. But that wasn't the case with you. I mean, again, you, you like to block. You took to the strength program. Um, what made it so easy for you to go from, again, one of the best players in, in the country, really, highly touted recruit to like, okay, now it's time. I got to grind here, though. Like, no one cares what my rating was, and I got to prove it. How How'd you flip that switch? Because, uh, I mean, it's totally different ballgame going from high school to college. So you got to have that mentality when you go to college. Like, you're not the best player on the field anymore. You're not the best player. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So especially as a freshman, you so you got to come in like, okay, I got to work to get to the, be the best player, you know what I'm saying, on the field in college. That was just my mentality, like, coming to college, no, I'm not the best person on the field anymore. Like, everyone's good is good on good every day. So in that vein, who's the toughest DB to go against on on the current team? I don't know why, but I, to me, it's Azaria. I do not know why. He's probably the toughest DB. Probably because he has year, honestly, freakishly long arms, just real strong, year, real fast. Honestly, yeah, facts. I don't know why. It's easy. Awesome. Yeah, no, I know folks are real excited to see what he does. And um, what, can, what are people going to be able to see from your game, whether it's the spring showcase or starting next season, that maybe they didn't see a ton of last year? Would, uh, um, I've definitely got better route running and uh, just moving quicker. 
in and out of my breaks quicker and just like being more physical. Like they're just going to see everything be more efficient. Yeah. Um, I don't, I hope I'm not giving away state secrets here, but yesterday I saw you block a single man sled, lift it above your head and throw it completely sideways. Uh, so folks, he's not kidding. When he says, uh, probably gonna be a little more physical, exactly. see it in the blocking game. Um, which DB talks the most trash? <laughs> which DB talks the most trash? The quietest. All right. You know what? Let's go. The, the quietest is Finn Charles. Let's get him out of the way. Okay. He's the quietest DB. When it comes to talking the most, it only it honestly just depends on the day for real. Cause you got Edwin and then you got Quindarius. And then like you got that safety, you got Shaheem. He's talking every day all you know what? It's Shaheem. I just thought about it. He's talking every day all day. Good day, bad day. Any any day. Who's no real we have the worst day ever. And he'll still And he will still be talking to no matter what. I think it might be on our Instagram. I, I, I vividly remember a video of Shaheem saying, you know, I don't really talk that much. I like to just lock in and focus on the game. So, uh, all right. That's, maybe in the game. In that's practice, an interesting. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God. He talks the most like, so after, after practice, you know, how everyone goes to their position uh, group and huddle up. Yeah. He's the only DV that tries to run through our huddle every, after every <laughs> practice. After every practice. That's he talks funny. from the beginning to the end. So, I, you know, I don't know if there's a, if, if maybe this is a little different for you, um, having uh, gotten to beat both in your first year, but what was more special, uh, beating UF or, or beating Miami? Miami. Okay. Is that because you're from down there? Kind of. Yeah. It's yeah. close to the home. And then, like, um, I feel like Miami is more of a rival, honestly. And then, like, yeah, because it's closer to home. And then, like, I know way more players that play for Miami than I do at UF. So. Bragging rights too, you know, that's fun. Yeah, it's it's interesting. I mean, that obviously question comes up a lot, but um, I think with fans, you know, you can almost tell what era people started watching Florida State as a fan mm -hmm. by which team they hate more. You right. know, like I, I started watching the late 90s, so it's it's Miami, right? Mm -hmm. I had to watch that 2001 team just, right. you know, that was tough. Right. And yeah, anyway, uh, oh, who's the best? Well, I appreciate this question. Hopefully we know it's a tie among everyone on the team, but if you had to pick one, Who's the who's the hardest worker on the team? Like who's the one that's just pushing everybody, uh, even when you know something sucks? Um, so last year, I gotta go back last year because it's two different teams. So um, last year and this year, last year was greedy to me, and then like this year is still greedy. But since Malik came in, like he's been like, you know, what I'm saying always on go, always ready to work. So uh, it was be either between Greedy and, uh, and Malik. Talk about what that's been like for a second. You know, y'all have what, four, four guys came in from Bama, obviously a guy in your room, Malik, who we just got to, we just got to talk with. Um, what is that like having, having a guy who's seen another incredibly high level program played for national championships, you know, and coming into this program, like what, what wisdom does he bring? What, what does he bring to the room? Malik's not big headed at all. I mean, Malik's always willing to work. Like he does no matter what, He's just always working, He's always working and learning new stuff. Awesome, man. You grew up a Dolphins fan, and if not, who's your team in the NFL? I mean, honestly, I didn't. I don't have no favorite NFL team. Sorry, Dolphins <laughs> fans. Be the one you play for. <laughs> yeah, it don't matter. <laughs> All right, man. Uh, I think that's all we got in questions. That's that's all I've got. We appreciate, appreciate you coming you. by to our spring football kickoff. Yes, I will uh, let you get out of here, man. Yes, Thanks sir. a lot. Hakeem appreciate Williams, you. folks.